I think there's great synergy between what King Randall's doing in Georgia and what we're trying to do here in Fearless. We want to inspire young men to be like King Randall and get involved in their communities and try to be leaders in their community and take responsibility uh, for their co communities. And King Randall's been at this, I believe now, for a couple of years. Uh, he caught my attention over the weekend, I believe on Sunday, he tweeted out, uh, these are the ages of children that were shot an hour away from my hometown, um, from my hometown at a gas station. Boy age five, boy age 12, girl age 13, girl 13, boy 13, boy 14, boy 15, boy 15, boy 17. And then he follows up by saying, folks going to sit here and act like mentorship is going to change this. Absolutely not. If you as a man can't admit that we need to create an entirely new system, you're smoking something. Speaking at schools, mentoring on podcasts, etc. will never, ever do anything serious. Be serious here. Our communities are hot trash because of pretend fake work. He then did a follow-up tweet. <clears throat> it's 2023, and if you seriously think an inspirational speech is going to fix the serious crap going on in our communities, you're lost. Stop blaming God is, is saying we need, bl I'm sorry, stop blaming God. Blaming God is saying we need to pray. No, God only helps those who help themselves. Your prayers are useless. If you're doing nothing, it's akin to playing the lottery. Sad times we're living in, and the system has a strict hold on our men. Um, then he has a, the xforboys.org he lists. As, anyway, King Randall, uh, I read this, and I was somewhat sad reading it because it, 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 it expresses some frustration that I think you're feeling, and it made me go, I wonder if, if King Randall's starting to question whether the work he's doing is having an impact. And so I, I would like for you to, first of all, tell us what you are doing in Georgia, and then tell us what you were trying to convey with your tweets. Sure. Um, I have an all-boys boarding school in Albany, Georgia. It's completely free of charge. Um, we don't charge the parents anything, uh, but the students, they live with us 24 hours, seven days a week. We have nine boys that we have at this particular moment, uh, but I've been boarding children for the past four or five years. Uh, I started at my home, and sometimes, just like what I was talking about in that tweet, I get tired of the excuses that men, uh, weak men make in our communities about why we can't do anything. I was 19 years old. I had seven juvenile offenders in my living room, and I was even taking care of my own child at the time and I funded them by fixing cars cutting hair paying people's houses uh, doing anything I became a neighborhood handyman to pay for field trips to feed them in the evenings and feed my own child and I didn't have a job but I made sure that I was taking care of these students and these children every single day I had one child out of every child that I've ever worked with for the past five years go back to jail and the only reason he went back to jail was because I literally had to go on a trip and he went right back to his home environment and he had to go he had to go to jail because of something that he did being in the wrong environment and it's so tough nowadays and it's hard because moms make it extremely tough for me to do my job because so many of them oh well my baby this and my baby that you'll call me and say can you come talk to my son no I don't want to talk to your son can you bring him to book club consistently can you bring him to bible study can you bring him to the workshops we're doing I have a, a automotive repair workshop teaching kids how to work on a car well he didn't feel like coming today well who's the parent here like it's so much stuff that's going on and I've just began to be beyond frustrated i'm tired of being politically correct i'm try tired of trying to say things nice and for weak men in our communities it's absolutely ridiculous we got guys out here thinking they're doing something and they're mentoring you know and they talking to a kid once a week and think they're doing something I'm like absolutely not half y'all don't even have no no children i'm like you're not married and don't have no children why exactly can't you go find one or two boys to go pick up every day from school take them home get them something to eat why can't you go find a family to feed why can't you really go do some real work because all this pretend fake working we're trying to do this and we're trying to do that. No, you're starting nonprofits, and what you're doing is you're getting all these grants, and the communities are are failing. And since they are failing, you continue getting these grants. Our our organization hasn't got one grant. We don't we don't get any government funding. The communities that you serve, they they benefit you. 
uh, if they're in turmoil. They benefit the school systems for being in turmoil. They benefit the churches. They benefit the other nonprofits because they give them money because the, the system has the cities in turmoil. You get paid for it. So literally, they don't want to see anything better. That's why the pastors around here tell me I need to be quiet and stop doing stuff. And the pastors want to bring me to these back room meetings and, and commissioners and everybody want to tell me to be quiet because I go say these things. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm sick of the excuses. Uh, we making weak boys. We got them all in their feelings all the time and what they feel like doing it. Nobody cares about your feelings. It's war out here in, in the real world. It's, it's complete war. We don't have the time to be worried about, oh, my feelings this and my feelings that. We don't have time for that. I got a son. My son, he needs things. He needs food. They need clothes. Both of my sons need all of these things. I don't have, they don't have time to be worried about my feelings. I have to get up and make it happen. Whether I'm happy, sad, angry, mad, or glad, I have to get up every day and do everything with the same vigor that I, do, that I would do it if I was happy. I get up at 4.30 every morning. I go to the gym. I go to the gym. I go get my students squared away. I go get my kids squared away. I put everybody in school. I make everything happen. I do after school. I do Bible study. I go to bed at 8.30. I do this every single day, nonstop. Why can't other men do these same things? I eliminate all those excuses because of my age, and that's why older men do not like when I start saying stuff, because it makes them look stupid and useless, because they give too many excuses about the things they should have been doing for a long time. They should have been doing this stuff. Our community should have been changed, and we still out here blaming the white man and still blaming the system. It is 2023. If I could do it and, and board children for free, and charge, I'm not charging parents nothing. I pay for them to eat. I pay for their haircuts. I pay for field trips. I put gas that's in my truck, my staff vehicles. I make sure my staff has everything they need. I make sure the kids have everything they need. Why can't we do this all around our communities and stop making freaking excuses? There are no more excuses anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. King Randall, how old are you now? 24, 25? 23. I'm 23 years old. 23 years old. What gave you the heart the passion for what you are doing? Uh, I just simply seeing what's not been done. Um, I was 18 years old when a, a classmate of mine went to jail uh, for 30 years um, for hiding a weapon that was used in a, in a murder, even though he wasn't there, he hadn't been in any trouble. Um, but he got sentenced to 30 years and I'm asking the judge, you know, I'm just trying to advocate for him. I'm like, is there anything he could do, some type of program he can get into? And they're like, no, I'm just like, why don't we have any rehabilitation programs for juvenile offenders in, in our communities? And they were like, well, they do have rehab. They have a, a functional family therapy program where they meet for three months, once a week for an hour. And they're spending $8,000 per child on that idiotic program in our, in our community. That's not helping any children. Be for real with me. I don't even use that much money for the students that I, that I serve. Or whatever. So it, it, it's, it's stupid to me. We didn't have any rehabilitation program. So I started my program and that's when I discovered that children couldn't read. Almost 96 percent of the children that I'm working with, that I was working with at the time at 19, they could not read a book. These kids are in high school, middle school and different grades and they cannot read and write. It is absolutely ridiculous. I wish I could. I would want to show a video and uh, without embarrassing the students and not showing their faces, but show how they write and show how they read. It is absolutely ridiculous. My son is four years old. He reads fluently. He reads better than the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth graders that I have coming in the classroom. He can write and everything. He's doing crossword puzzles, whatever. And he's four because I have him his own teacher, you know, here at our school. But our students are being completely failed. And our school system where I live is spending so much more money than the average school in our state. And our kids are graduating and they can't read. Why are only 39% of the kids here graduating proficient in reading and writing? That is absolutely ridiculous. And the only reason that number is so high is because they keep sending home, kids home for no reason. I just got another kid, got expelled. He's been written up eight times during the year for stupid stuff like making noise in the classroom and, and talking. And he just got expelled for this last time because he was making noise and they got tired of it. Like, it's dumb stuff. They can't even deal with kids. It's just, it's just a, a lot that builds the passion, which is why... I created a school, which is why I have to fund this myself. I do understand that I did get hot for a little bit and people saw what I was doing. Once they actually saw that I was serious about creating our own ecosystem, creating our own system, I was wiped off from the media. I understand that because it doesn't benefit the system. So I know I'm going to have to make my own money again and, and fund what we're doing on a, on a mass scale because I want to see big schools. I want our entire city. I want all boys coming to our school. And we want to create a girl-sister program for girls to go to these schools and take these phones out of their hands. 
Our kids, no cell phones. They don't look at TV. They don't get on their phones. We don't show them the news. None of that. They have strict systems every day. They get up at a certain time. They work out. They eat. They go put their uniforms on. They come to class. They do their class work. We do Bible study. We pray. You go eat again. We do our afternoon activity. You go to bed. Weekends, field trips, whatever. But we have stuff that we do strictly and literally after the first month and they went home for a break. Their parents like, oh my God, my son is this whole new kid. You know, literally just routines. Routines build habits, habits build character, character makes the man. It's really simple. Routines are important for boys. If you don't have any routines for them, they're going to fail. If, you, if you're not teaching them that it's war out here, those kids are going to get destroyed. And that's what's happening to our boys right now.